Oh, <laughs> hello, and welcome back to Comedy Therapy with Christian. It is Tuesday, December 3rd, and oh boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to catch up on. First of all, you like my new music? It's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's royalty free. Uh, made a purchase online. $15, Pond5. Uh, there's me giving credit. Um, wow, yeah, it's December 3rd. It's the holidays. They're in full swing, people. And uh, first off, let me start off by apologizing for no episodes last week. What happened was I went back up to New York. I was at home. And I said, oh, I don't need to bring all the equipment. I'll just, you know, record a couple quick episodes on my iPhone. And then it sounded like shit. So I decided to not make episodes uh, because I don't want the quality of this to go down. Uh, God knows the quality of it already sucks when you have to listen to me ramble on for so long. So I, I want to make that as... As easy as possible. Um, but, oh, dear God, have we got a lot to talk about. I can't <laughs> I don't have words to describe everything that's gone on the past couple weeks. Um, I'm acting like there's some kind of tragedy that's coming. There's no tragedy, I promise. Everybody safe, I promise. Um, so, I even, I wrote it down in my book. I have a list. I have a list of things that I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> there's just, let's start off with driving, okay? I was driving up to New York. And I stopped at a rest stop. I try not to stop at rest stops because I like to go straight through because I'm an asshole. Um, so also, I apologize if there's some background noise of like trucks and shit, but I have my windows open because it's way too hot in my apartment. and I'm trying to air it out with the 40 degree weather. Anywho, I was driving up to New York, stopped at a rest stop. And for some reason, I thought this was so funny. There was a hearse parked at the rest stop, a hearse, ladies and gentlemen, the vehicle used in most funeral settings to transport the deceased from one location to another. It took every ounce of my being not to go over and see if there was a casket in the trunk or not. The trunk, I don't even know. Do you, do you call it the, uh, the cab? I, I don't even know. And the kicker is it was parked in a bus-only parking spot. That's like a hearse driving in the HOV lane. Nobody says they have to be breathing. Just saying. Um, Thanksgiving happened. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I'm glad. Even though none of you are going to respond. And it's just me hearing my voice echo through this house. Um, I had a good Thanksgiving. I was home for, I was up on the island for the whole week. Um, it was a lot of, it was a true week on Long Island. Uh, and yes, I say on, not in. And I say online, not in line. All you twits who say, well, it's actually in line. You're actually just wrong. Let me talk the way I want to talk. Okay. You talk the way you want to talk, I'm going to talk the way I want to talk, okay? You understand? You understand me? That's how we're going to do things. On the island, um, it was a true Long Island week. Uh, because there's something special, as some of you know, or all of you, I don't really know. Uh, not that much of a fan of New York anymore. Uh, not, not that I'm not a fan. My mindset is I grew up there. It's always going to be home to me. No matter where I go in my life, New York's always going to be home. 
but I lived there for the first 18 years of my life. And I kind of moved on from it. Uh, but it is always good to go back, and especially around the holidays. It's There's just something really cool about it. Even when you go into Manhattan, it's like, you know, you go and see the, the Rockefeller tree, and you... You all, you know, you see all the 800 people ice skating and trampling over each other. It's great. It, it is, it, it, there's no better place to be during the holidays. There's no place like home for the holidays. For no matter how far away you roam. Um, so... It's a great place to be. Uh, I hope all of you got the chance to go home and and spend some quality time with family and friends and catching up and doing all the lovely things you love to do. Um, I did have a good time. Uh, Saw my family. um, Had Thanksgiving dinner at my grandparents' house. It was great. Turkey was amazing. Juicy, juicy, juicy turkey. Um, it was a, it was a butterball that, that was the real deal. Butterball is the way to go. This was probably the most juicy turkey I've ever had on Thanksgiving, considering that Thanksgiving is really the only night of the year that I eat turkey. And then that's my fill. I'm good for a year. Um, so, you know, um, you go, then of course there's Black Friday, um, Biggest day for idiots among us to assemble and um, tear down the walls of of your local warm Walmart. I can't. I I can't get over. It. We actually, my mother and I, went furniture shopping on Black Friday. We were like in the mall and everything. It was really not that crowded. I guess it's not that big of a thing. Oh shit! You got to be kidding me! I just realized today's Tuesday. I missed out on Cyber Monday. I was just going to do this whole spiel about how I'm such a big Cyber Monday guy and how I don't go to the stores on Black Friday when in actuality I went to the stores on Black Friday and I forgot to pay on Cyber Monday. Damn it. Uh, this is live. This is real time, folks. You're, you're experiencing my stress. Um, so... Yeah, the stores really weren't that crowded. I really like to see people acting like idiots. That's that's how I am. Um, gig I was supposed to have this weekend got canceled. Uh, unfortunately, the venue was double or, or triple booked or something, so I'm going to be doing a D.C. gig uh, sometime in early January. Um, and then I have uh, something in New York going on in February. I'll talk more about that as time gets closer. Um, but yeah, the holidays are in full swing. It's the holiday season. Hoo hee hoo. Um, so, oh God. It, when I look. <laughs> oh boy, today's going to be a great day. I have therapy coming up at one thirty. Again, pre-recording this episode. But I have therapy coming up at 1.30. And I'm stoked. That's the nothing better than the post-Thanksgiving therapy session. Nothing better than to say, yep, I was at home the whole week. Even though this week really wasn't stressful or anything. I didn't have any uh, anxiety issues or anything like that. Um, it's still great. It's it, Again, it's the holidays. Everything is just so... I'm extremely backwards. I love when it gets dark early. I love when it gets cold out. I love this time of year. Summer's when I get extremely depressed. It's too hot. Nobody's around. Everybody's away doing something, going to, you know, Boca Raton or wherever you people go. Um, I don't even know if that's a place. Boca Raton? Is that a place? Maybe. Um, And then we also, we we have some questions. That I'm going to run down later in the show. 
uh, I asked you guys, or I asked my Instagram followers, to submit some questions that they want me to uh, answer on the show. Um, so I'm going to uh, run those down in the latter half of the show. Uh, so that should be fun. I got some good ones. Got some, got some good ones. I had to filter them. Not everybody got it. All right, I had to filter some, but I got them down to like 15, 16. Uh, so that'd be fun. But yeah, I'm just sitting here. In my apartment, I got my Christmas tree up. Got to put the tree up. It, it's kind of looking like a Charlie Brown tree right now. It is small and skinny and kind of sad. I never know how to fluff these things up. Do they? Do they come like? They come all like, oh, you got to fluff up the branches. Why don't you fluff up the branches for me? I don't get that. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's Christmas. I graduated college six months ago. Do you know how fast time flies? And then before I know it, I'm going to say, hey, we graduated college 60 years ago. <laughs> uh, I, I certainly hope I don't sound like that 60 years from now. How old will I be 60 years from now? Jeez, I'll be 82 years old. That's scary um you ever think about that you ever think about the future you're like where where am i gonna be like i think that's in uh what is that back to the future 2 where they go into the future um and doc tells marty that it's very important that they don't see their future selves because it will usually send both parties into shock uh, because one person will be like, oh, I'm young. The other one will be like, I'm old, and I turned out to be a failure. Then the moral of the story is that nobody's history is written yet uh, and that it's just a history of if it follows a certain uh, timeline. But I think about the future. Think about where I'm going to be. I don't know where, but I just think about it. It's this is turning into a rather melancholy moment here. Um I oh god. I'm sorry. My thoughts are going all over the place. There is a horrendous smell of weed coming in my window right now. If you've never smelled weed before, it's the worst possible thing you could ever smell. And down here in DC, south of the Mason Dixon line, it's legal. It's legal here. I don't know why. But it is. I'm not for legalization. I said it. I know I'm not trying to get political on here, but I, 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 I don't see. Drugs are drugs. People get addicted to them. People get, you know, they wind up ruining lives one way or another. And right now it's ruining my podcast by the smell coming in. God. I think I might be getting a contact high. Um, so, yeah, that, uh, I don't even know what the hell I was talking about. I think about the future. Thanksgiving was cool. Um, now I'm just back down to D.C. for a couple of weeks until Christmas. Uh, then I'm going to go home for two weeks. Those two weeks, I'm definitely going to work some arrangement out with the equipment and try and record some episodes those two weeks. Uh but I saw a couple movies um, since we last spoke. I saw Ford versus Ferrari. Amazing. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Christian Bale is just, he's the master. He is the master. He's great. And th this role that he has isn't particularly a emotionally deep kind of role. Or, or as deep as maybe other roles he's played in the past, but nevertheless, he does a great job with it because he's just a phenomenal actor and he's one of the best out there. Um, so I saw that it was much, much better than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be bad because I had heard a lot of good things about it, but I thought it was going to be, you know, good. I, I didn't think it was going to be great. Uh, very emotional ride. Um, 
great movie. And racing scenes in movies can kind of kind of tend to make me dizzy at certain points. It is, it's not like that at all. I didn't get dizzy once. I was able to follow the action of the cars extremely clearly. And the story is great. And I never knew about this story. And I think I would have been pissed if I'd known about it before going into the movie. But it's it's made me go back and research the actual story of how Ford built a car to beat Ferrari. Um, so definitely go and check that one out. I 100% recommend that. Uh, what else have I seen? I saw Knives Out, uh, the Ryan Johnson murder mystery who done it. Uh, that was good. Um, didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to. I think I had built up expectations in my mind that were very, very high, just because the idea of an old school who done it like Agatha Christie kind of thing got me excited. Uh, and it was great. It was great. Daniel Craig is freaking awesome in it. He's he's got this southern like preacher accent in the movie. He's not doing his usual British shtick. He's not doing his stone face James Bond thing. He's funny in the movie. And for some points he's used as comedic relief. But there is like a fun air to that movie. It's very fun. It's PG thirteen. There's no cursing left and right. There's no, you know, gratuitous violence. It's just, you know, it is what it is. And it's just trying to explain the story of who uh, murdered this guy. Uh, the one, there was one girl, I have no idea what her name was. She was like the lead in the movie. She was what you would consider the main character, even though there's like a cast of so many people in here. She was amazing. No idea what her name is. I think I had seen her in something before, but she was very, very good. Um, I think the movie was great. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, what else did I watch? Watch this depressing dog movie. I don't know about you people, but whenever dogs are in movies, or if it's a movie about a dog, I just I, I can't do it. It's so sad for me to watch any movie about a dog because you know what's going to happen at the end of the movie. You know that the dog is going to die. Um, and so I, I'm i so weird like that, and I think a lot of people are like that too. They, they get pretty emotional about that. But, like, I can watch... Uh, like, I can watch a Tarantino movie. Watch 30 people get killed in one scene. Nothing. I'm just like, oh, you know, that's a fun little action scene. But if there's a dog that dies in a movie or if somebody kills a dog, I am an emotional wreck one way or the other. Crying, angry, whatever. I just can't handle it because they're innocent creatures. And I love dogs. I love them to death. Uh, but this movie was called, uh, what the hell was it called? It was called like Hachi. Or something. That was a dog's name, Hachi. It was based on a true story. This dog walks to work with his owner every day or, or walks to the train station with his owner every day and then he goes and waits at the train station for his boss, his boss, his owner to come back. And the guy dies at work and never comes home. The dog doesn't know that. You can't explain that to a dog. And the dog's just sitting there and he sat there and went to that spot at 5 o'clock every day for nine years until the dog finally passed. But seeing the dog so sad and upset, and I was like, it's heart-wrenching to watch shit like that. And my grandfather was insisting, he's like, you got to watch this movie, you got to watch this movie, you got to watch it. And I tried to fight it every turn. Really did. Because I'm like, I don't know if I have the emotional capability for this. My stomach is filled with food. Right, It was on Thanksgiving. My stomach was filled with food. And I felt like I was gonna, my stomach was going to collapse in on itself. As if that wasn't enough, I said, I, I can't emotionally handle a dog dying. And I can't handle emotionally a movie about a dog that's extremely sad and nobody can make him happy. Um, it was a good movie, don't get me wrong. It was very well made, very well done. It was a good movie. And if you're going to watch it, just 
be ready to cry. If that doesn't make you cry, you're not human, and you have no soul. Uh, so it was good. It was just, it was a lot, as people say. It was a lot. It was so much for me to handle. I don't know. This is how it happened. Um, so, Hachi was another movie I watched. Last night I watched a really weird movie. It's called You Were Never Really Here. Amazon original with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, our boy Joaquin. Uh, he was amazing in the movie, but it has to be one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Uh, he's a veteran with severe PTSD. He's jacked in the movie. He's huge. Um, and now in his time in civilian life, He's hunting down people who traffic underage girls, and he's killing the people who traffic the girls. So, you know, you hear that description, you're like, Joaquin Phoenix doing this? Like, this sounds sounds awesome. This sounds like it's going to be like a kind of Taken kind of movie. Um, but it was much more emotional, the movie. It, it was much more about uh, dealing with trauma and facing trauma. Um and Joaquin killed it. And it, it was a good movie. And I think I enjoyed it. I think I did. I had to read a lot of reviews online. A lot of, you know, theories as to what exactly happened in the movie. Because it was one of those. Um, but that was certainly weird. But I'm glad, I'm glad I watched it. I am glad I watched it. Um... <laughs> Uh, I just can't figure out what the hell I was going to say. I'm sorry. I, I'm crapping out on you. How long have I been going here? I've been going almost 23 minutes. Uh, well, I guess we'll get into questions now. As I sip my root beer. Um, so I asked people to submit questions. I'm thinking of making this a part of the show because I think it could be very comedic. Um, and I think it could really stir up some, some good, uh, conversations. Somebody said, uh, first question, and, and I'm keeping these anonymous, by the way, I'm keeping these anonymous. If you ask them, you know who you are. If you didn't ask a question, go fuck yourself. Um, so here's the first question. <laughs> here's the first question. Um, what is your go-to breakfast food? My go-to breakfast food. Oh, boy. I love breakfast, first of all. It's my favorite meal. I can't eat it right when I wake up anymore. I used to be able to do that, like, all throughout my life, all through, like, high school. Then that drastically changed once I got out to college. Uh -huh. And I started, like, eating nothing for breakfast, which was dangerous. But now I'm getting back into, like, eating stuff when I get up because I go and work out. And I come back up from that and I'm starving. Uh, which is good. So I love anything with eggs. Really, I really love, and I love eggs in a variety of different ways. Scrambled is always great. Folded over like an omelet, even with nothing in it, is great. Uh, over easy, great. Over medium, great. Over hard is even great for when you're putting it on a sandwich. This way the yolk is broken, but it's already fried into it, into the white. Um so that anything with eggs, I, I I don't know. There's no like, there's nothing where I'll like walk into a restaurant and say, you know, give me this, 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 this and this. Uh, but um, I think yeah, anything with eggs. And I'm always terrified to make eggs. Salmonella poisoning frightens me. Uh, there, <laughs> there's so much. Uh, to do wrong with eggs, that it's very difficult to get it right. Cracking eggs, I'm surprisingly good at, even with my shaky hands. That I'll almost never get a shell caught in uh, in the actual egg. Um, making them is hard. Got to pour on the S and P, salt and pepper. Um, but yeah, I like eggs. Anything with eggs is fun. Second question. What do you think is the best Fantasia movie? All right, I have a confession to make. I've never seen any of the Fantasia movies. 
Um, however, now that Disney Plus is back, that's that's a Disney thing, right? I think so. Um, now that Disney Plus is back, I'm going to be sure to uh, check that out. I'll get back to you on that. Whoever asked that question. I don't even remember who asked these because I just wrote them down. Uh, third, where do you live? Fuck you. Stop. Don't ask stupid questions like that. Fourth question. Um, why are you the way you are? Because this is how I am. I know who asked that question. I'm not going to say the person's name. The person knows who they are. And I'm not a fan of that question. You know damn well why I am who I am. Why, or why I am the way I am. So why don't you just go off into the corner and relax. Okay. Um, what was that? It was... It was four. Now we're on five. Uh, <laughs> what is favorite concert... And why was it your favorite concert? You know, was it the venue? Was it the band? Um, okay, I might go into a little bit of an anecdote here, but forgive me. I'll try to make it as funny as I can and not boring. Um, so as most of you probably know, those of you who know me, favorite band, good old G&R, Guns N' Roses. Um, I, about, oh boy, three years ago, Four years ago, I was not into them. I wasn't. I knew Paradise City. I knew Sweet Child of Mine. I knew Welcome to the Jungle. And I knew You Could Be Mine. Four of their songs. That five, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Um, their rendition of Knocking on Heaven's Door. Uh, I was not into them. Um, I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I didn't fully understand it. Um, my favorite band at the time was ACDC, uh, which is still one of my favorites. Um, they're very close second. I kind of wobble between whether ACDC and GNR is actually my favorite. But a stroke of luck actually hit because, well, it's not a stroke of luck, but ACDC's Singer Brian Johnson had to uh, come off the road because he was facing total hearing loss. And they, Angus Young, the guitarist for ACDC, who was in charge of the band, he hired Axl Rose to fill in on the vocals. And I'm like, why the fuck are they getting Axl Rose? Like, that, that makes no sense. Um, and it sounded great. And I was like, ACDC is my favorite band. I have no choice but to see them under these circumstances. Axel sounding great, sounding like he's crushing it, so I'm going to go. But that's not the concert I'm here to speak of. Uh, so I had bought those tickets, and it was a couple months away still. But the other big story happening in rock music involving Axel Rose as well was that Guns N' Roses had just re reunited, um, and that they were, and when I say reunited, the original three members, Axel Rose, Slash, and Duff McKagan, um, Axl Rose and Slash specifically had not spoken in 20 years to each other. Um, nobody really knows why. There's all conflicting reports why. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know any of this. All I knew was there was a big reunion going on. This was probably the biggest reunion to ever happen in rock history because nobody, nobody thought this would happen because there was shit going on on both sides with with the trash talk and the, you know, and everybody would be like, in that interim period, in those 20 years, be like, what would it take for you two to just put things aside and just get back up on the same stage? And they all said, and there was one interview Axel gave, and they said, "Is that gonna, are we ever going to see you guys reunite? And he said, not in this lifetime. To which then, this reunion tour got named the Not in This Lifetime Tour. Um, so I heard that this concert was happening uh, at or this tour was happening, and they were doing two nights at MetLife Stadium uh, in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And I'd never seen a concert at MetLife. I'd never been inside MetLife, actually. And for some reason, I was feeling really pulled to go see it. 
that I'm like, I feel like I got to go see this. If I'm going to see Axl Rose with ACDC, just something tells me that I got to go see this. Nobody was going. Nobody said that they wanted to go. I, I asked a few people, not a lot, because it's a very specific kind of music. Um, and literally the night before, my buddy Joey texts me and he says, hey, man, he's like, we got to do this Guns N' Roses thing. Are you in? Well, are you out? And I said, yeah, let's let's do it. Um, so we bought tickets, 70 bucks a pop, really not bad. Had great seats, dead center. Um, dead center as far as like the second tier of seats and also like head on with the stage. It was great. Um, and this was just like a big deal. Like everybody was talking about it, that Guns N' Roses were back together and they were coming into town. People like, I've waited 20 years for this. I've waited so long for this. I can't believe this is actually happening. People were renting limos and showing up in limos to this thing. And people were getting all decked out for this, costumes, everything. And the fan base was the most diverse fan base I'd ever seen. Ever. Because that a lot of rock bands would kill to have that kind of fan base that they have. Because most of these rock bands that I go to, that I go see... It's very, you know, very straightforward. A lot of older people go. People that are older than me. I shouldn't say older, but older than me. And they have a fan base that is old, young, like my age, younger than me. It's kids that are into it, um, that were dressed up in costumes and everything. Different ethnicities all over the place. Pretty much a, a lot of equal assortment of men and women. A lot of women are into Guns N' Roses as well, which is which is odd because those classic rock bands, you find out they're kind of a lot of male-dominated shows that you go to, but this was a lot of women and a lot of men. Um, And I'm like, this is something, like, this is more than just a bit. There's something culturally going on here. There goes the siren. Go get them, boys. Uh, but... I'm like, there's something culturally going on here. Uh, this is more than just some kind of reunion. This is a big movement that's happening right now. Um, and it's a great piece of history and music. And I'm so glad that I went to the show. We took the train, and the train was packed to the brim. You couldn't even breathe. They had, like, three trains coming in at once. And, you know, people were offloading. And then it was... The concert was great. Uh... Lenny Kravitz opened, and he was amazing. Amazing. He played about an hour, hour and a half, so it was long for an opener. Um, but it was kind of billed as like a double bill almost. Um, and so Guns N' Roses don't come on until like 10, 10.30. Uh, not because they were late, but because I think Lenny Kravitz went on late, and he played so long. Um, and I was worried the whole time. I'm like, the last train leaves Penn Station at 2 in the morning, and we're going to fucking miss it. I just know it for a fact. Um, and concert was great. I didn't know any of the music besides those couple songs I just mentioned before. But there's all these fireworks, and then when they go into Paradise City on the encore, there's fireworks going around the whole stadium and just, like, blowing up the place. Like, it's just... Like, I was like, could you imagine being in a plane and just looking down and being like, what the fuck is going on there? Look at all those fireworks. People like, that's Guns N' Roses playing. Um, and it was that moment, that, that concert, where I was like, these guys are really something special. And that's, that's when I started to get into their music. And that's when I say that a concert is uber successful is if you really don't know anything about the group or, or, or the person that you're going to see, but you become really, really interested in them afterwards, I feel like the concert then succeeded, which it did on all accounts. And I went to see them the second time also uh, in D.C. a year, a little, about a year and a half later. Because um, this tour has been going on for almost four years. Uh, it just keeps on, keeps on rolling. Um, so... 
we did miss that last train. It was just an experience. We were so tired. People were throwing up on the train from how drunk they were. Somebody said somebody actually died at the show and had a heart attack because the humidity that night was disgusting. Um, but it was it was just so fun, and that cemented them as a band that I was definitely into and a band that I was definitely going to follow. And then eventually it solidified into them becoming my, my favorite band ever. So that's that's my long-winded answer to that question. Um, somebody said, what did you think of The Irishman? I'm running out of time here, so I'm only going to get to a couple more of these. Um, what did you think of The Irishman? Well, uh, I talked about this a little bit a couple episodes ago. I don't I don't remember which one it was, but I have to watch it again. It's on Netflix now. I saw it in the theater. I don't think the theater was the right place to see it. And that's the only time you're ever going to hear me say something like that. I have to go into it with a different mindset. I was expecting something so over the moon because some people are saying, like, this is the greatest fucking movie you're ever going to see. And I'm like, all right. And I'm going in like, this is the greatest movie I'm ever going to see. But it's long, it's long, it's long, it's long. But I also have watched a lot of things that are long. Also, you can binge watch eight episodes of a TV show and not bat an eye. And there goes eight hours of your life. You'll never get back. So three and a half hours in retrospect to that is not that much. Um, so I, I, I got to watch it again. I'm going to try maybe splitting it up, like do an hour a day. Um, or I may even try it in one sitting. And maybe it'll be different from the comfort of my own home. Uh, but I'll, I'll get back to you. Right now, I'm conflicted. I The one thing I can tell you is that it's very good. It's extremely well acted. It's extremely well directed. I just have to figure out where my personal feelings on it are. Uh, but I definitely recommend it to anybody who's a movie fan or anybody who wants to because Scorsese's the master. Um, he's the master. Other questions? Do, do, do. Where'd my questions go? Let me see. Uh, I think I had time for one more. Why do you enjoy making people laugh? Because it's therapy. That's why I enjoy it. I truly believe laughter is the best medicine. I said this. Um, I said this on the Syllabus Week episode when I first started this. It is the best medicine. There is nothing better than collectively sharing in a laughing experience with people. And I really love that. I really do. Anyway, that's the show for today. We're coming up on 40 minutes. I want to thank you all for tuning in and for being such loyal listeners. Uh, and I will talk to you on Thursday. I'm going to try and get some guests on here uh, so we can do more guest spots again. Um, and I forgot my headphones at home. So my mother was kind enough to ship them up here. So I'm waiting for those. So this whole episode without my headphones and it's just, it feels extremely weird. Um, so I will talk to you all on Thursday. Enjoy your Tuesday. Enjoy your Wednesday. Enjoy your forthcoming Thursday. And I'll talk to you then. All right. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>